Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never on this episode, we focus on marketing your salon on social media. Also, how do you deal with no shows and layering fine hair, but still having that nice choppy edge to it. Uh, this and more. Here we go. Welcome to the Matt Beck Show. Thad Bolanais is here. Yep, yep. We or are am I a figment of your imagination? <laughs> you could be. We are here to answer all of your questions. We have uh, some questions submitted on fsesocial.com, which is our social media website. If you guys haven't signed up for that, make sure you go sign up. Um, I know that I keep begging you every video, but it's very important to me. Uh, so if you like this show and you like our videos, you have to become a member on fsesocial.com. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, so we have some questions from that community. Also, um, you guys use the hashtag the Matt Beck Show on Instagram, Twitter, anywhere that you can use a hashtag. So I got some questions from that as well. So thank you guys for everyone. Whoa! I'm not leaving <laughs> <out> here. <now. laughs> thank you for everyone that has submitted questions to the show. Let's get started. I was thinking Matt Beck leans on the table. I'm only on the table. <laughs> nope. I lean on the uh, solid part. Yeah, I didn't realize that <laughs> you moved your hands so much. I mean, I should have known that. <laughs> yeah. I can keep them solid so that you can. No, nah, that's all right. All right, guys. So question number one comes from Carly Rosario from the FSE social app. And um, she says, I need advice. I know. Uh, oh, I want to know how to market your business. Do you offer specials? Where are you marketing outside of social media? I'm a new stylist and honestly, I'm off to a great start and I never imagined it would be so good so soon. Sweet. Uh, but right now, 80% of my marketing is spent on social media and I want to know how to up my game to bring in more clients. I think this is like a fantastic question. I actually already answered this question on the FPC <coughs> social app. Um, you did? Yeah, my, my response was, uh, watch the Matt Beck show. <laughs> <laughs> so... so this is really cool. Uh, oh, you saw this question on there? Yeah, I was eating <coughs> breakfast and, and, I, and I saw it on there and I answered the question with... Today? Uh, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's All right. right. So um, so we're our minds are connected exactly. at this point. <laughs> All right. So Carly, this is what I would say. This is such a good question. Let's break it down. Um, there's different parts of it. So <clears throat> do you offer specials? So when our salon first opened, I definitely offered specials. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think you should necessarily discount your uh, services. What we did was we created memberships, which was cool. So it was like a monthly membership where people pay uh, monthly. The great thing about that is they got a discount, but it was more like they were part of a club and it kept their frequency of visit up. So the, the way that you create a successful business is that you you base it around how often your guests are coming in and how much how many services you're doing per guest coming in. So um, we look at our software, we use Millennium Software, and um, we look at our frequency of visit, we study that number. The industry average uh, female guest is coming in about five times a year right now, um, which isn't very good. So if you can get that number up, um, that's what it's all about. So you want your salon to average around eight to 10, um, 12 would be perfect. So really look at that stuff. I think a lot of people, if you have already built your clientele, I'm gonna kind of move into the rest of the question. If you've already built your clientele, you feel good about the amount of people you have, maybe now it's time to cater to those people. You know what I mean? Like, don't, don't look for more people. More people doesn't mean better business. More people means more complicated business, and now um, you're saturating your time with more people, so the quality goes down a little bit, and then what happens is you're not worth the amount of money you're charging. So I would focus on maybe raising prices if, you, if you're ready for that, if your book is getting full. Um, if your book isn't getting full, maybe start working on like a membership basis or even um, just really work on your quality of service for those guests that you have because the only two things that I would invest my time in for marketing a salon at this point is social media, which social media you're doing, but are you doing it fully the right way? Are you only targeting people within your area? Are you only, like on Facebook, I can target um, women ages 30 to 50 um, in New Hope and maybe a surrounding town 
and target that. And then what are you targeting? Are you targeting an ad? Because no one wants to see just a picture. Maybe it's like the best work you've ever done. Blast that picture out and just celebrate the picture, celebrate the hair. Don't even talk about your salon. I think a lot of people too often are just, you know, my salon, uh, $10 off a haircut, that's what you're gonna market out there. No one wants to see that. No one wants to come to a salon that's a discount salon. They wanna come to a salon that does great work. So post your best work on Facebook, blast it out to people in your area, and you're gonna get a bigger response from that than you are on an ad. And the way that you can test that is post an ad on Facebook, and then, not an ad, but post like a picture with uh, your prices and all that, and then just post a beautiful picture of your work. You're gonna see you get a ton more likes on that piece of work than you do on the, the one with all the numbers on it. So coming from like a bystander, like, the whole like SEO, like social media, SEO being search engine operating, yeah. um, social media, Instagram, YouTube videos, like photography, it seems to come pretty naturally to you. So maybe somebody who that doesn't come naturally for, yeah. maybe they take their marketing money and invest it in themselves, take like a couple classes for photography or an SEO business class at the community college or something along those lines. So that way they know a little bit more about what they're doing with their social uh, marketing. Yeah, I mean, I think you can learn a lot of that stuff. I totally agree with you. Um, the problem is, I think a lot of people spend a lot of their time, um, they spend a lot of their time taking like classes and stuff on that, but mm -hmm. I think nowadays, like I didn't take a class on any of this stuff, and maybe it does come a little more natural to me, but it didn't really come natural, I just spent hours and hours studying it. Oh yeah. So I think like if you're on YouTube, it's really just paying attention to what is working. Like if you make a post on Facebook, I think a lot of people just post it up, they move on to the next post, they don't think about, well, how did people react to it? You know, and if you start looking at your social media a little bit different, and when you make a post, take a look at it a couple of days later and say, and start analyzing what posts are working, what time they're working. There's great reports on Facebook. It's not, it's not a hard thing for anybody. I think you just, it's Spending in, time doing yeah. it is the hard part. Oh, for absolutely, people. and it's how you learn to yeah. learn how to do it. Exactly, like you learn by like going on the internet and searching. Yeah, there's times that that works for me, and then there's times that like mm. I feel like I'm in a giant black hole and I'm in nothing but ads, and I'm just like I'm done with this. Yeah, yeah, and you need like you need that hands-on mm -hmm. kind of visual. So yeah, it, there's a lot of different opportunities. I don't think you need to spend a lot of money this day and age um, promoting your business. I also don't think you need to be out there door to door begging people to come in. I think making social media posts and taking care of the people that walk in the door are the two most important things to have a successful salon. And the fact that it's come fast and easy to you is fantastic because it doesn't come like that to most people. Um, and so I, I would take advantage of that. And if it doesn't feel like it's coming easy to all of you guys out there and not just Carly, I would say, um, don't worry about it. It doesn't come quick and easy. Uh, I, I spent definitely three years uh, of the whole memberships and just trying everything I could to get people to, to come back in the door. So, um, and now, you know, we're not even doing marketing right now because I can't, we can't really, we're getting new clients. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want an influx of more new clients because we don't really have the room right now. So that's the whole situation that we're going through and making some changes, which we'll talk about in a little bit. I think a really good, uh, and this is going to be like a shameless plug, a really good video for social marketing uh, or social media marketing would be uh, Josh Dixo's uh, video on so <laughs> how to social media. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So uh, next question is from Chrissy Aveda on Instagram. She says, how do you handle no-shows? Do you have consequences for clients no-showing? Not sure if we answered this question, but I'm pretty sure we didn't because Thad asked me about this today. Uh, this is something that we are, because our books are full, and they're full for pretty much about three weeks out at this point, uh, with almost everyone, with everyone, yeah. basically. So um, the problem is when you have your books full and you've planned out your time, and then somebody no-shows, it's, uh, it's very frustrating for a stylist because you have your planned out money that you're supposed to make. If somebody no-shows, then... Yeah, I made the mistake of adding up that the money that no showed on me last week or canceled last week. Right. It was very depressing. Yeah, so that's a lot of money that leaves your book when it could have been filled with somebody that would have shown up. So 
are there consequences? We're working on that now. Our consequences at this point are if, if you've, if you become a person that does it multiple times, like Thad has a couple guests that are consecutively not showing up, mm -hmm. um, you're just not allowed to pre-book. And you can call in, and hopefully there's an appointment available. If there's not, you can't pre-book. And I did that to one of my guests before uh, who wasn't showing up, and now he's back on rebooking because he started showing me that he would show up for his appointment, so I gave him another shot. It's not a negative thing. You just have to be honest with people and explain to them that, you know, it's I have to put people there that are going to show up. And that's just that's mm -hmm. the reality. You know, it's not I don't not like you. You're a great person, but it's just. Yeah, that's the tough part is that the three people that I, I'm most uh, I would say frustrated with because I like them. Like, like they're, right. They're great people. Like, like once they're in the chair, like, like I love talking with them. I love working with their hair. Right. But the, it's that day of like canceling or like last minute like canceling that just or no showing exactly so that's that's what i would say i mean you could charge them for no shows that's another thing you could take a credit card i think that's fine people seem to be a little bit more negative about that but i know there's a lot of salons that do it um at this point in time so maybe have it like that they can't um pre-book their appointment but if they are insistent on pre-booking their appointment then they, they pay ha that they have to yeah. prepay for their appointment you can do that with a gift card and just keep that on their file and say, if you don't show up, like the gift card is getting charged. Yeah. So that way they don't have to worry about, about being like, well, I don't want to leave a credit card on file. Like I don't. It's a good call, Thad. So I like that one. Yeah. You just make that up? I'm, I'm th I, I, I <laughs> thought about that yesterday. That's good. <laughs> I like that. You, you, that's what we should talk. So I, I think that's a great idea because it puts the money in the business. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have to leave a credit card on file. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. Security. Good job. Safety. So that, that would be the answer. I think that's a good, solid answer. Thank you. All right. Sweet. All right. Do I get the Thad Bolin show? The Thad Bolin I show? Yes. <laughs> uh, Ashlyn Liu on Twitter. Uh, we got everything today. Uh, can we see a salon tour? I'm curious about the layout. <laughs> so I mean, boom. <laughs> this is the layout. There is only one more room in this entire building, yeah, and it's our washroom. One and a half. There's a, kind of a bathroom. <laughs> it's a half bath. So we're working on, we're actually working on a remodel of the salon. Um, we have a lot of things in the works right now. There's, it's actually the reason I haven't really been putting out as many videos because there's some days where I, I like the last two weeks have been insane. Um, I was in Orlando and, uh, and then I get back and we're working on a renovation here and we're also working on a couple other things so um there will be a salon tour video there just hasn't uh, we haven't needed to have one because honestly you're looking at the whole thing um, come in the front door and then just like walk straight there's back, nothing special right, about the layout of this salon let's put it that way all right last one um is jose yeah instagram so it says, hey, Matt, I remember in your video on how to layer fine hair, you kept the layers within the top rectangular section and cut everything below one length. How do you modify that for a client who has fine hair but also wants more texture at the perimeter and more volume in the crown? So if you guys saw the um, how to layer fine hair, uh, yeah, basically I took everything from Prital Ridge and layered up, and then I cut everything from Prital Ridge down at a one length just to keep the, the bottom of the haircut fatter. Um, then we did seamless layers on the top so you didn't see that separation of the layers. If I were going to break up the bottom, I would probably cut the bottom with like a carving comb or something um, just to shatter it or a little more point cutting with my scissor um, and I would detail it that way. I would still not elevate the bottom because they have fine hair, so I would want um, to keep that heaviness to it. Would you do anything? Um, I actually did a similar technique on a client yesterday who has fine hair, a little bit longer than shoulder length. Okay. Um, I did it completely dry. I used my uh, Miss Tiny Puffins, and I point cut it. Or point cut. Point cut it. Listen to me. I point cut the perimeter, uh, and then I did some slide cutting around the perimeter to give it a piecier, more textured look. And then I did the same layers that you just talked about. Sweet. So yeah, that's uh, that's. You can always alter everything, and that's where. Um, you don't want to mimic everything. And I like this question because it's altering the haircut that you saw to fit your guest. And that's what it's all about. 
All right, cool. So those are uh, the answers. Thank you guys so much for submitting the questions. Again, if you haven't signed up for FSC Social, go to fscsocial.com. There's, there's a lot of you that oh, haven't signed okay. up. That's awkward. We do have 3,000 people on there now, oh, which is good. Yeah. good. Um, so you can ask your questions, share your work, um, get involved in the community. That's what it's all about. So go to fscsocial.com, sign up, submit your questions, um, and they'll be answered on this show. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Follow Thad. Thad Bolnice. And uh, follow us, everything at Free Salon Education. Also, um, there is nothing else, actually. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't either. I have no idea. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks you. for watching. We'll see you on the next show.